Uh, why did you leave? Yeah, it was time. It just uh, uh, it was time to go. You know, it's, um, I didn't want ESPN to be my last chapter. Uh, and, and once again, like you showed all of us that you could s- leave ESPN and still not only survive, but thrive doing something else. But it is tough jumping off that cliff. Yeah, because those four letters are so powerful and you could hide behind them and, uh, you know, get ESPN muscles there. But also I'm wondering about the the Sports Center teams as as we move down the road with whatever Sports Center is or what it's going to be. You and Stan Verrett were doing this together for a long, long time and probably the last of the known anchor teams there. It is it being discouraged or or you know that they even embrace that they want to have sports center teams anymore? Well, those are just those are decisions that are made at, with guys who had offices in uh, in Bristol, not guys who had cubes in Los Angeles. So uh, I had a, we had Stan and I, you know, listen, Stan and I looked up to you and Keith, and you know, we tried to emulate you in, in, in the ways that we could and, uh, and, and have a camaraderie and, and bring the entertainment and, uh, and do the highlights the way that, uh, that we grew up watching them. And, and hopefully we succeeded in that. How important was it when you first started to have a catchphrase for a highlight? Oh, I, it just, like bartender just came to me and I, you know, I, I never, nobody said, Hey, you got to have a catchphrase. What people said was you got to be in a commercial. I remember I went home to Hawaii and I, I'm like, hey, I'm going to be on Sports Center. I'm going to be on Sports Center. And all anyone wanted to know was, when are you going to do a commercial? That's all anybody wanted. So, but the catchphrases are fun. They're part of the, they're part of the E and the entertainment and the ESPN. Yeah. I, I, and I remember when we were trying to get athletes to come to ESPN, to Bristol, to do those commercials. And man, was it tough because they all <laughs> wanted to know, were they going to get paid? And then when you said, we'll make a charitable donation in your name. And then nobody wanted to come. So I said to Jason Kidd in Grand Hill, I said, would you do me a favor? Would you, would you come to ESPN? And then they were like, oh, for a day. Like, how long? And then I said, it would be for a day. And then all of a sudden, the reaction, when other athletes saw those guys do those commercials, then the floodgates opened. Everybody wanted to have their own commercial. Is there one that you were involved in that uh, stands out the most? Oh yeah, it was the Roger Federer commercial. It's the first one I did. I was the only person in it. Uh, I'm, you know, Roger. If they ranked anchors, where would I be? You know, <laughs> one through ten. I'm not sure you'd be in the top ten, Neil. And I was able to give him stink eye and say I'd be in the top ten. And what's really funny about that was Roger. Roger Federer wrote me after that, and he said, "Hey, I did some research. You're definitely in the top ten. Would you like to be my guest at the U.S. Open?" And I'm like, "Yeah." Oh and wow! So I wrote him back. Yeah. Never heard. Wrote <laughs> Following up. Yes. Never heard from him again. I'm watching the U.S. Open and they show Roger. Oh, there's Roger Better. <laughs> oh, Tiger Woods is there. And I'm like, Roger, I've never heard from him since. What was, what was the, your favorite thing on social media, the reaction when you were uh, leaving ESPN? Did anything stand out? Well, I don't, I'm not on social media, but people forward some stuff to me. And uh, the one that uh, stood out the most to me, and I, I said it on, is my, uh, on, the, on the way out of L.A., was somebody wrote and said, I've watched ESPN religiously for 20 years, and I don't even know who this guy is you're talking about. <laughs> so, I, think, I think that remind, gave me a little perspective. 